Hi, I'm Alan Ng. I'm with Zarina Kit, and today we review One Hour Out Call. A sophisticated, sexy drama unraveling the complex relationship between a call girl and her client who meet every Thursday night. It's directed by T. Arthur Cottom and written by William Norrit. Uh, stars William Norrit and Natalia Ochoa. Let's just jump into it. The one thing I like about this movie uh, is the narrative structure of it. I mean, it is literally, I think, six or eight parallel storylines running against each other. And and under kind of the guise of um, each each narrative is a visit between the Nat Natalia's character and William's character. Uh, what, did, what did you think of that? You know... The nonlinear storyline, I thought it was cool at the beginning. I thought, oh, okay, so we have all these different cuts that take place over all these different visits, and there's some graduation dinner kind of in between. And I thought, okay, that's cool. Like, I guess this is what they're going to do for the first few minutes, and then we're going to start the movie. And it just continued and yeah. continued and continued, and I was like, Okay, wh what? <laughs> it, was, it was just for an entire movie. I thought it was a little bit much. Not that I wasn't confused by it. Yeah. Just so we're clear, um, you know what's happening is there are basically eight parallel storylines going on, and we're constantly jumping between select storylines. And um, you know, and I, I understand because I, I felt the same way at the beginning. And uh, and there comes a point where it's like, well, how long can they maintain this? Um, and I think I, I I stepped back and saw it more as an uh, as from an artistic standpoint, especially in storytelling, because I, I liked how they were um, when they would do certain jumps. Like you know, essentially the way it's set up is each encounter feels like uh, it's kind of role playing. You know, a, a new, uh, you know, the Natalia's character comes in as a new character for this encounter. And um, and so the tone and the tenor of each encounter is different. But you realize that there's a kind of a progression to all this. And then there's yeah. a, a, a bigger backstory behind it as this yeah. uh, as the style comes out. But it sounds like you had issues with that. Well, yeah. So each storyline all took place in pretty much in his apartment. And it was just the two of them. So the outfit is the outfits are different. What they're talking about is different. The and, tone of our conversation, yeah, yeah, and and um, they get to know each other. Also, I mean, sometimes she has she got a couple of different names. She's Esmeralda. Uh, sometimes she's uh, as sometimes they're taking a bath together. Sometimes she's complaining about her roommate to him. Sometimes she's talking about her grandmother that died. So, and then another one, he's giving her a gift. So we do see how their relationship uh, progresses, but we cut back and forth. And then there's this underlying storyline of a, gra a college graduation. So to me, I like you said, from an artistic standpoint, I thought that was a great idea for an entire movie. Yeah, you know, we talked about the nest in a previous review where that was such a slow burn. It took its time. It took its, uh, it, the pace was deliberate here because it's these quick jumps. I, I think it kind of contributes to our uh, society's um, need to have things happen really quickly in a film. And I just, I just, to me, I just didn't, I didn't like that. I didn't like that to be honest. Well, one thing that I I liked about the way it was done was in in the first half of the movie, it's done and played against each other to feel like you know a typical, I, I guess a stereotypical escort uh, uh, client relationship where, um, you know where you you wonder you question his motives, uh, you question the way that yeah. You question um, the character she comes in how she she's she's aggressive in this moment. She's the girl next door in this moment. Um, then there's suspicion that plays. You know that she has to you know has have her driver nearby or check in with her driver, and they play these things against each other to kind of tell this this like I said stereotypical uh, call girl client relationship. But then you realize that when you start to unravel those stories, um, 
you know, it's not what you think it was. And it tells uh, even deeper, more personal story, especially in, in the client's life. I, I think his name is Jeff, if I remember right. You know, and that's that's the thing that just really intrigued me. And and there's a dinner scene in the mi- or yeah, a restaurant scene in the middle that doesn't see, that seems out of place until you realize it's not out of place, and and you see that play out. And so I felt like from a from a story standpoint, uh, it played out really well, and it was very clever. Uh, and I really enjoyed that aspect of the movie. Yeah, it was very clever. I do have to say, it was very very clever. I just would have wanted a little bit more of a break from all the, the or quick slow it down again, maybe. What's that? Maybe slow it down and ease ease into each of the Yeah, perhaps, yeah. perhaps. But it was just uh a little like okay and this this scene ends with the door slamming. The next scene ends with the door opening. It was a little like mm-hmm. you know almost too artistic. Like oh he's giving her a gift and she is you know she's got this box and then the next jump cut is someone else receiving a, a box gift. So sometimes a scene ends on something and the next jump cut begins on something similar. And also that was just getting like, like to be way too much of that too. I, I felt differently. I mean, I, I've, I've never, I've seen these kind of films before, but I did think that this was not only original, but Clara as well. And the way it plays out in the end you know, it does make you go back to the beginning and realize what was going on in those early early moments that led to the final ending, which which personally I, I felt paid off. Okay, so one thing I will say negative about this was um, I was I was frustrated by the acting, especially from uh, from William Norrit. I think he's a much better writer than he is an actor. Yes. Um, it just you know it's it's as if I were to act, <laughs> you know, and things like like why and also. You know, ironically, I like the editing of the storylines, but the editing within each of the stories was rough to me too, especially conversations that had a lot of coverage. It just felt like the 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 editing was just uh, it just felt like movie editing. You know, here's here's a, a shot of this person, here's a shot of that person with their conversation, uh, and so I that probably my biggest negative about this. There was an amateurness to it. Like you said, the acting wasn't that great. The editing within the scenes was very pedestrian. I just felt that it was just not not up to par in being uh, a good feature film. It could have benefited from having uh, some type of a mentor or some some somebody kind of godfathering uh, the filmmaker because in there is a really good film somewhere. It just mm-hmm. needed a little bit of tweaking. Um, just by the fact that you didn't like it as much as I did, um, I, I think the gimmick uh, wore thin on you. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking that you gave it a five. Uh, I, well, I'm trying to be a little nice because I appreciate the originality. So it's a six. It's a six. Okay. Well, you liked it more than I did. You probably gave it a seven. Yeah, seven and a half. Uh, I. I, I I love the story. I love, I think it was just clever. Um, all to the point where I forgave a lot of uh, the, you know, the technical yeah, problems right. of it. Um, so seven and a half. Uh, okay. All right. Visit filmthreat.com for more news and reviews. Uh, like, subscribe, and comment about what you thought of the film below. And with that, let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs>